Between 2018 and 2020, I was enrolled as a student in the Art in, Art in Public Space Master Program at the Oslo National Academy of the Arts. During this time, while participating in the didactic activities, I was also looking at the institution. At, I was looking at how the institution was functioning. And I started to get interested in a specific group of employees, the technicians, maintenance workers, and cleaners. Those whose labor, fundamental for maintaining the condition for the, the didactic activities to take place, runs the risk of being overlooked, often getting noticed only when something is dirty, missing or broken, or not taken care of. So I wanted to pay a tribute to them, but I didn't want to impose an artistic expression onto the context and make a project only about the employees, but also with them. So I decided to involve them in the creative process of a project which eventually was titled Gallery of Employees. But how to involve them? How to intervene in this complex context, considering, for, is, for instance, that, the, that uh, the institution is also a workplace for those I was addressing? The project Galleries, uh, Gallery of Employees is a series of 16 woven portraits of the technicians, maintenance workers, and the cleaners employed at the Oslo Academy of the Art. Instead of using traditional sitting sessions for those portraits, I involved the participants in a dialogical process that aiming at reaching a mutual agreement on the composition of their portraits. The idea, as revealed by the title, was to start a gallery of employees on the lines of the academic tradition of the gallery of rectors. This, for instance, is a picture from the gallery of rectors at the uh, Universitat de Barcelona. Imagine my surprise when I found out the Oslo National Academy of the Art has its own gallery of rectors. It consists, as of today, of five black and white photographs, uh, portraits of the previous rectors, kept in the proximity of the rector's office, an area of the building where the access is restricted for the students and the general public. But rather than mere institutional representation. I wanted to focus on the tension between the specificities of each individual and their role within the institution, thus exploring the borders between uh, public and private within this specific context. So I started by contacting the employees individually, presenting the overall idea of, of my project, and handling a participation agreement that explain the terms of the, their possible participation, the different phases of the process, the aspects connected with issues of authorship and ownership, and the destination of the completed project. The participation agreement stipulated also that each employee was given the choice between two forms of non-monetary compensation for the participation in the project. If the first option was chosen, I would make myself available as their assistant for um, a full working day. Also, a chance for me to observe, observe the institution from within or from their own point of view. Alternatively, I offer to fulfill to the best of my abilities any task, commission, errand, service they would request. 
for a duration u equal to that of the time they spent on my project. As a first step, I invited each of them to join me for a face-to-face -face conversation. Uh, a conversation which was uh, loosely based on a set of 10 questions um, that uh, were oriented at collecting elements that could be used in these portraits. Um, for each portrait, I then selected a number of elements that came up during this conversation. Uh, this could be objects, places, ideas, um, activities, in any case, elements that seem to be significant for the sitter, or also hints that could help me remember who or what the, the, that person had told me. And I translated those elements into figures, motives, or sometimes kept as written notes, and I used them in the, co the composition of, their, of a preparatory sketch for their portrait. Each sketch included also an outline depiction of the countenance of the, of the sitter and the motto. That could be either a direct quotation from the conversation or a paraphrase or so even some uh, keywords. Each sketch was then sent in uh, to the respective employees for approval uh, so that the sitter had the opportunity to demand changes or remove some elements before the approved sketch was eventually used as the basis for the final portrait. The final portraits were woven with an industrial jacquard loom the choice of weaving as medium was motivated by its complex set of associations with the domestic sphere, where the activity of weaving originated, with the representation of power and prestige of the elites that fueled the European tapestry tradition, and with the decisive role of mechanized weaving in the history of wage labor. Framed and labeled like the portraits of rectors at the Oslo National Academy of the Arts, the portraits have been presented earlier this year in the graduation exhibition for Ubestem Tiet, curated by Marius Moldvar at Startblocka in Neruz, which had been postponed for one year during, due that to the COVID-19 outbreak. Here we have some installation shots. Uh, sculptural work accompanied the project in this exhibition here. A text paying tribute to the portrait workers is handwoven as a set of ribbons that were pinned to a wooden ladder borrowed from the exhibition venue. The exhibition included a letter that was previously sent to the current rector of the Oslo National Academy of the Art, where the project was formally offered as a donation to the institution. The offer received a positive response by the newly appointed director, Marcus Degerman, but couldn't be processed at that time because, quote, Kio has recently received attention for our inability to administer the Academy Art Collection, so I wish to make sure that we get the formalities correct. I'm now planning to involve, again, the employees in the installation of their respective portraits in the premises of the institution, a process that will hopefully produce the opportunity to articulate further the individual portraits. This project constituted an attempt to develop what I named, for lack of better words, a careful approach, meaning an approach based on an attentive, responsive, 
and respectful consideration of the consequences brought about by a project for the people involved. An approach in which observations, ethical considerations, and dialogue are oriented at the continuous verification and readjustment of assumptions, methods, and goals. I have to say, I've considered, I've considered changing the subtitle of today's lecture to a careful approach, question mark, for one involving other individuals in an artistic process, intervening in a given context, such claim of carefulness cannot rely solely on the artist's intention. In order to minimize the risks of possible negative consequences of an artistic intervention, such claim of carefulness needs to find confirmation in the sentiment of everyone involved, verified over and over in all the different phases of the project, and readjusted and need. I would then say that doubting, rather than asserting, is a fundamental component of this approach. It's a part of its toolbox. I would like to introduce you Sigurd, who felt misrepresented by the motto I initially proposed. He said it was dark and pathetic and too personal. But he sent me a long list of quotes he liked from sources as diverse as Winston Churchill, Gandhi, Goethe, and Bruce Lee. I selected an excerpt from a quote by Vietnamese Zen master Thich Nhat Han, a monk, peace activist, and writer, a proposal which Sigurd eventually accepted. So it end up, if you plant lettuce, if it doesn't grow well, you don't blame the lettuce. <laughs> Please meet Unni, who accepted to participate exclusively as an employee. She asked me to remove elements associated with her private life that she didn't want to make public, as well as motives she didn't wish to be associated with. This is Nan Seng. She requested to have a more cheerful expression that could reflect the nature of her personality. During the conversation, she told me that sometimes she has to put extra work to clear out the student mess. The student's mess. The latter is a source of safety concern and conflicts between the administration and the students at Kia. Nanseng silently protects the unaware students from more sequer con severe consequences of their actions, at their own risk of being reprimanded by her superior. She is the kind of person that would rather be happy to put extra work to make it extra nice and clean instead. Together, we discussed it whether the motto I proposed was appropriate, or if it could become a potential source of further conflicts. We eventually decided together to go for it, as it was rather representative of her positive attitude in work and life. Studying in an educational institution is not only about learning, but also about being in an environment constituted by a complex set of social relations. While the didactic activities can be considered the main goal, the basic conditions enabling them to happen are put in place and maintained by actors who are, who are usually not associated with a pedagogical program. Among those actors, maintenance workers, technicians, and cleaners are the most present in the everyday life of the students. You come across them in every corner of the building, whether they're cleaning the staircase, uh, fixing a lamp, or rigging up some equipment for an upcoming public event. 
Intended as a tribute to those workers, the portrait composing gallery of employees turned out to be an aesthetic support for the exploration of intersubjective relations. Rather than establishing a direct correspondence between representation, the portrait individual, uh, sorry, uh, and, and this social role within the institution, the portrait are the results of a social interaction between two individuals. They refer at specific encounters that took place and the conversation and, and the negotiation that happened. During this process, I considered the implication of what I was doing with questions such as how my double role of artists and, and students can affect the participant's response. For instance, is my invitation to take part in the project always already a burden for those who I am addressing? And is my intention to consider the individual specificities already contradicted by targeting a specific group of workers, the members of which are defined on the basis of their position in an institution? In other words, Am I already imposing an identity as cleaners, technicians, and maintenance workers to the, individual I, to the individuals I am addressing? I did my best to openly engage with the participants in discussing ethical considerations related to their participation and to their role in the project. For instance, the risk of being instrumentalized by my artistic discourse or to be reduced to the functions and roles they fulfilled in the institution. Th those were among the topics that were addressed during the conversations. It was indeed important to find the balance between the public dimension of the project and the focus on the individuals who needed to feel safe, protected, and able to decide what to share with me and the public about their private life to the extent that they felt comfortable. It was then a balance between private and public that needed to be found with each of them through a process of negotiation. I would then argue that involving the participants from the onset of the process in the reflections around the possible risks connected to it had a positive effect on the de degree of participation the project was able to engender. Such process was certainly facilitated also by my role of artist and student. While some employees might have found the idea to participate in an art project attractive, others probably felt a moral obligation to help the students, or at least avoid imposing an unnecessary obstacle to a learning process. For instance, Marianne told me that also her son was conducting interviews in different companies for his final thesis. So she thought it was important to, to be supportive and as the leader of the service support infrastructure section at the Oslo National Academy of the Art, not only she accepted to meet me, she even invited all the, works in, the workers in this section to do the same. Emil, on the other hand, initially declined my invitation, saying he had had a conflict with one of the students and didn't wish to appear out there. I told him I was sorry to hear about that and I understood this decision and that I was, it was not my intention to put, in, to put him in a difficult situation. But I also asked him if he would consider reading my project description and in case he changed his mind, I would be glad to have him in the project. He contacted me he contacted me a few days later. 
he told me he was accepting to participate because he thought it was sufficiently clear that I didn't target him and his colleagues because of what they are, but because of what they do, which seemed to make all the difference for him. I believe the ultimate sig significance of this project lies in its ability to envisage, activate, and explore forms of su subjectivity and relation between them that respect but are, are not reduced to the roles, the social roles prescribed by, by the institutions to each of its actors. This is the list of participants, and I would like to conclude uh, with a text, a very short text, titled Those I May See Again. Among them, there were those who listened to me, those who kept, kept a professional attitude, those for whom it felt like going to therapy, those who sought to deviate from their daily routine, those who were supportive, those I assumed were, were underprivileged, those who wanted a more appropriate compensation, those who wanted newer equipment, those who wanted more collegiality, those who wished to spend more time with their family, those who wished they had a family, those who walk in the forest, those who are football fans, those who are lonely, those who are handy, those who are patient, those, those who are shy, those who are curious, those who are ready for the next step, those who are still looking for it, those whose life is improving, those who plan the retirement, those whose dreams had to be put aside, those who had to start over, those I was afraid to disappoint, those I may see again. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for a wonderful presentation of a wonderful artwork. Um, it struck me from your starting point with this um, director's gallery that another approach which your decisions did not incorporate, but which I thought is quite essential, is the, um, the portrait in itself. The painted portrait is, it takes time, and it's also a manifestation of power. And in that sense, your portraits, they are very creative, and fresh, and it's logical, it really makes sense. Um, but I kept asking myself, why did you avoid to paint uh, an oil painting of each one of them and hang it up like the director's gallery? Um, was it because of lack of skills? Was it because you didn't want to? Or um, if, if you could talk, maybe I, I'm sure you have thought about this. Mm. So I, I just would like to hear if you have something to add on, yeah. on that decision. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I never touched oil paint in my whole life. But uh, no, seriously, the, um, um, I considered, of course, the choice of the medium um, and I have to say, um, painting is, um, in my opinion, very much associated with the um, individual. Uh, with it, it's, it's, it has a, such a long tradition in terms of. Uh, Expression of of the of the cre of its creators more than what the port the individual portrait. Um, um, more than the, the the person who is portrait. 
so and it it has very much this uh, um, uh, this um, there's this idea of the individual genius behind oil painting, of the, uh, which I thought it would have been counterproductive uh, in this sort of project in which it's really much about um, uh, trying to um, base every choice on a sort of negotiation with the sitter. Um, um, so I feel like sometimes what oil paint can hide is the, this, the fact that the, 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 the expression, the immediate expression of the, of the, the gesture of the, the, the artist onto the surface, um, that kind of hide in a way the idea that of what a portrait is actually because uh, when we think about what a portrait is, a portrait is a, um, always a negotiation and always a social relation between two people, between the person who makes the portrait and the person who, who is port portraited. And there is a set of um, um, expectations um, from both parts. The, the artists want to, or the portraitists want to make a, um, was, want to catch something from that person, and the person wants to, is expecting to have a sort of a, a maybe a flattering uh, image, or maybe to, to see something um, uh, of himself that he didn't notice before, that somebody else can notice, but there is a, always a sort of a back and forth. Um, 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 field of uh, power and expectation between these two uh, components. Um, so, uh, yeah, for me, painting is very much uh, connected to the um, to the um, the expression of uh, of the portraitist rather than so it there's a there's some unbalance there that i i i thought um yeah needed to be uh to be adjusted somehow and i i actually cons i considered rather using f uh photography because the the gallery of portrait at kio is composed by photographic portraits uh, but at the same time, uh, photography has this, um, it's very much used and um, uh, as um, with its evidentiary uh, qualities, it's very much used in system of controls and identifications. And that also um, give, in my opinion, less space for these negotiations to happen. Um, uh, yeah, so this um, way of working, I was able to build uh, these compositions um, in time um, while the conversation was taking place, while I was submitting the sketch to the um, these individuals and having feedbacks and modifying it and submitting it again. Um, so that would not have been possible with, with photography unless, of course, you make photo collages. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I reply to your. No, no, fine. Thank question. you. Mm. Thank you. Um, do we have. Any other question in the audience? Yes? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking a little bit the same as uh, Nana. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah, thank you for a very nice presentation. So, uh, I think the, I understand that you wanted to portrait these people. It was because to, to pay them respect and to lift them up. 
And I'm thinking that the, the way they were presented as a very casual in a way, in a playful and extremely nice way, uh, is, you are not doing the opposite. It may be that the, the director should be shown like this and the other people, the, the workers there should be lifted up. That it's, uh, it's um, yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking about what I see them, that they maybe, uh, yeah, it's maybe a little bit too casual for the ID. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a question, but this, I think I find it interesting that this project, this uh, rector's portraits are actually hidden from public view, um, and there, are very, there is very little information uh, about them. It's very difficult to find out who made them, uh, how did, who decided, who who had to do them, and how. Uh, but then that's, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it, it has still to do with a sort of idea of sacrality of uh, authority. Um, um, but, um, yeah, and, but this is, uh, is part of a long tradition which come from really far from the portraits of kings and popes, and then little by little uh, other aristocrats started to want the same portrait, and then at a certain point the professors uh, and in the different academies wanted to have it too, and or the rectors as part of this, um, yeah, as authority, authority figures. Um, so, yeah, my, my intention was not to, to change this tradition. This tradition exists, and I'm fine with that, and uh, I find it, um, yeah, interesting that it exists, it makes me think uh, and um, process ideas. But I just didn't want to repeat this pattern and... Um, yeah, and, um, and the idea was to keep all these different elements um, which are superimposed to each other to also point out that uh, maybe... Um, in somehow I find the uh, process more relevant than the final result. Um, the final result could have been done, and it could have been made other choices with other, other elements. Um, that's very much circumstantial, but uh, to leave everything there open uh, with um, partial erasures, with mistakes, with... Um, um, just without removing all these elements. Um, of course, at the detriment of the r readability of the image, but uh, I suppose that's, that is because maybe the most important aspect is not the image itself for me, but it's more like a, a, the, yeah, in the sort of gesture of uh, pointing out of, of, at this um, luck uh, in um, yeah, the representation of those who are actually creating the fundamental conditions for everything else to happen, and uh, yeah, and uh, consider this this uh, this an as an occasion to learn actually uh, from them. Yeah. So I'm gonna give the mic to you and then to Truda and then who raised their hand here? You. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you. I, I really like that you have chosen to, to weave them. I think that's make them very beautiful. Did you consider other way of making them as, uh, and thinking about collages or something? Yeah. Um uh, yeah, but I developed uh, kind of an obsession for weaving lately, so I was uh, already very much into um, studying, uh, understanding more and more how 
how this um, yeah how this works and um, yeah this could be of course done with um, with uh, in other mediums but I think that there is something about um, this idea of labor uh, and this idea of um, also reproductive labor and maintenance and um, which is very much connected also with the, the, the history of textiles um, and um, yeah so so there's it I never have one only reason to choose something. I always try to choose something because I have kind of uh, a set of uh, relations that are suddenly in place, and then, and then, um, uh, and then that they, yeah, that they point out that what's the best way to do it uh, for me. So then it's only about accepting that. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, collage is also. There's also very specific uh, history, and uh, let's say if I maybe had to, to do such a work for um, maybe newspaper or other kind of mass media, maybe I would rather use collage. But uh, for um, yeah an educational institution where is, there is also art and craft departments. Um, and uh, where I have been enrolled as a student and look at these people going around with their clean and trailing, with uh, doing this gesture and everything, and it's also very much um, effective choice, I would say. Um, yeah. Um. Thank you for a wonderful um, presentation, Rich. Um, when it comes to also your process of doubt and the, question, the questions you had to ask yourself during the, uh, yeah, as the process went on, whether you were reducing or instrumentalizing um, uh, the persons involved. Um, I. I uh, wonder if, I have two questions. I wonder if it was intentional. I don't think it was, but I, I have a, I wonder if uh, you could answer whether it was intentional that the original rector photographic portraits, now when I see them, I've seen them before and always thought they were a little bit strange. But now when I'm seeing these compared with yours, they stand out as so comical or, or, um, an expression of vanity or, um, and this, you know, Jörn used to be my colleague and now he's there in this black and white, they, they uh, and I think it's your work that makes them suddenly become so, a little bit comical. Um, was that your intention? <laughs> Well, it not. I wouldn't say that because uh, because. But there is something comical about it, definitely, and um, and um, and I think it's confirmed by the fact that they are in this area, which is not public in pu on public view. Uh, so it's a very much. Uh, it's very much like, yeah. Uh, they feel so old, old, right? Like in the the, the configuration, the very hieratic posture, and the, of course there are some small gestures. Okay, it's modernist photography. Okay, but um, and it's also compared to others. There are at least uh, two out of the uh, out of the five are women, which is uh, uh, considered um, most of the galleries of rectors around the world are, are 90 percent uh, male characters depicted. But still, yes, they are a bit uh, comical. And uh, the last one was like 
uh, when, when you, when you, if you were there with me at that time, it was rather comical because the last one was not yet uh, mm -hmm. hanging. It was just, uh, and they didn't have the label yet. Uh, and um, last time I went to check, now then they they moved into another wall because there was no space for the last one anymore. And uh, but now the wall is already too small for the next one, which Marcus is now. When he will leave, he will also have to appear there. Actually, there's one in the middle who has left um, one year after his. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but um, it was not my main goal, I would say. But of course, uh, there is, a, there, is um, there is something there which is outdated, to say the least. And also, I didn't get where your portraits are hanging now. Where did they end yeah. up? Uh, it's not yet hanging. Uh, it's in my storage for the moment. Um, so, uh, but uh, but uh, I'm in conversation with the uh, with the institution now to see if I'm allowed to, or if they find finally a way to 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 accept it. Um, they found last spring this. Um, there has been a public debate about the. Art Academy uh, collection because they were it was it it has been very badly preserved. The pieces have been uh, given out as gifts, uh, um, but now it seems that there are finding ways to deal with it. And uh, I really would like for the institution to have it and to involve the, the those those uh, workers again and uh, to see with them what's the to, to see with them what's the way to uh, to install them in the institution something that makes sense for everybody and and um, yeah at the beginning the idea was to put them in dialogue with these portraits but uh, but uh, that's yeah, that's not important. That's uh, that's um, that's it, it, they are already in dialogue. They don't need to be installed next to them. I think. Thank you.